It doesn't make sense. I really want to understand it. Because the constitution is clear, too tame, done. So Kabila doesn't want to leave a power. We all know it. So why do we have to go to a dialogue with a criminal with him? I can't get it. I really, I really want to, I really want to, we, please make me understand it. Apart from that, quick, just quick, brother. I want to ask all the Congolese, don't even think about that meeting in Luanda. It's nothing going to come there. All of them are dictators. They were, they were in power before I was born. So don't even think about it. We have Article 64. We can put in practice. 19 December, midnight, Kabila has to go. That's, please answer my question, please. Thank you. So-called the first election was won by Bemba, who was in prison, actually. And the second election, in 2011, we marched here in London to allow clear election, which, I mean, we don't even need an election anyway with Kabila. And yet, Mr. Kisekedi won the election. But the West decided to leave Kabila. And we call him president? You know what? I'm a British. I work, I pay my taxes. I'm 61 years old. I drive buses. And I feel ashamed that my little penny goes to help someone like Mr. Kabila, who kills the Congolese. You know what? Let's not even call him president because he doesn't even deserve the name president. He kills the Congolese people. He's not even from Congo. Let's, say, let's call Kate Kat. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Chibabu, leader of uh, UPA. Um, my uh, uh, question, first of all, I would like to thank the British government for uh, keeping us uh, here and um, I would love as well my question is going straight to the international peace interna peace international uh, on the matter of uh, that okay the conflict which is in Congo it will spill out of Congo and it may affect all other countries which are neighbors to us we have almost nine neighbors and I would love to know what exactly the British government is going to do with our neighbors, because they are the one who are supporting Kabila today. And there's, there's a neighbors. And, uh, and yeah, but uh, here, when I'm talking about neighbors, there is few neighbors which are uh, uh, may be friends, but there is other neighbors as well which are concerned as well with the uh, uh, Congolese situation because all the neighbors have to be concerned because this, it will be their problems as well as our problems. But I want just to know what the British government is going to do because Kabila doesn't understand all those languages of peace and uh, it, what he does understand is maybe about the force. In any form of government or wherever is dialogue, whatever you call, we need your support that all of us here we can be represented in any kind of form or decision taking and Congo this time. Thank you very much. Uh, I want uh, to ask uh, Mr. Dan, have you done your survey? How many Congolese, since Joseph is in power to now, how many people killed in Congo? I'm right. I'm right. 
from uh, your survey, you can uh, conclude this is not the person who can uh, lead the Congo after 19 December. You want, again, more Congolese to die? Yes or no? no. And uh, make sure, since Joseph is in power, our children, they were born here, they become adult. They are revenge. They are British because it's a link now. That is my word. Thank you. Um, so why are we asking for dialogue? I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think that there, there is a, there is a, a vacuum. Uh, we want that vacuum is likely to uh, promote instability. Instability, as we saw on the 19th of September, will be responded to with violence. That violence will create deaths. That is why dialogue is, is important, uh, to somehow fill this space in this. We're going to have uh, some sort of transition period because we are not going to get uh, elections. Uh, well, we, you know, it's, uh, I'm not going to get them on the 27th of November. That's, uh, that's absolutely not going to happen. Um, so we need something to fill that space. And that is why dialogue is important. It needs to be fully inclusive. It needs to have the support of not just opposition parties, but civil society, uh, the church, and the, and the people as well. But that is why dialogue is necessary. I, I completely agree with you there. What are your answer regarding all this? I think the British government is clear that President's, President Kabila's democratic mandate finishes on December 19th, 2016, and we will have to re-examine the nature of our relationship with him. On the other hand, with the European Union, we are pushing for targeted sanctions against those responsible for suppressing human rights and fundamental freedoms, and we are leading the calls within with the international community to take a strong position on the current situation in the DRC. Well, what the actual relationship between London and Kinshasa actually? Well, as I said, we will have to between now and the 19th of December, there is a lot that could happen. We hope that there will be progress on holding elections in, as soon as possible in 2017. So I think on the 19th of December, we will have to re-examine what the situation is and what progress has been made between now and then to judge how we will... Do you have anything in mind? I think we need to see the situation unfold and react accordingly. Pourquoi avoir organisé cette conférence de paix pour le Congo bon, On organise ça parce que c'est important. Nous sommes dans un moment très crucial pour la RDC. Et euh, en tant que civil society et aussi diaspora, disons diaspora, nous sommes appelés à, à être. Nous sommes appelés à mener euh, un lobbying ou advocacy pour essayer un, un peu de voir clair dans ce qui se fait en RDC. What, what you, you heard about Congolese diaspora here in the UK? What are your answers regarding all this? Um, well, uh, uh, what, the first thing I should say is that the, the passion that I've seen today has been, uh, you know, really inspiring in a way. Uh, it, it's, it's impressive to see, even though people are far from their homes or far from their, uh, uh, where their, their families and friends are, they still have the passion. I think we've heard a lot that, uh, about the, the need to, to, uh, to move uh, uh, after December the 20th and I have to say that you know, the, the British government is committed to, do, to doing that, keeping the pressure on the government to make sure that uh, we don't see violence and that we do see a democratic transition of power as quickly as possible. You are a leader of the PES, what is your view par rapport to this conference? No, it was a conference where we came to talk to the British about the situation that happens in us. Apparently, they have understood what happens. On les a demandé surtout que Kabila ne dépasse pas le délai constitutionnel. Il doit partir et par après nous allons nous mettre ensemble un dialogue inclusif où nous allons maintenant mettre en place euh, un régime spécial qui va diriger le pays durant ces temps-là. Merci. Et pourquoi assister à cette conférence Bon, en fait, euh, nous représentons les amis de Moïse Katumbi. Et, euh, et puis, Moïse Katumbi est un Congolais et il devait nécessairement être présent. Alors, nous les amis de Moïse Katumbi, nous le représentons ici, nous sommes des Congolais et ce qui se passe au Congo, et ça nous intéresse tous. C'est pourquoi nous sommes en ces lieux et nous pensons que notre contribution peut aussi apporter un changement au niveau du Congo. Vous venez d'assister à la conférence concernant la situation chez nous, quel est votre avis là-dessus Je vous remercie d'abord pour la question, je suis tellement flatté parce que ce sont parmi les histoires que j'essaie d'éviter pour le moment. Mais je me présente dans cette émission parce que vraiment il y a une nécessité. Il est vrai que la réunion a été euh, juste organisée par une organisation qui s'appelle Peace International. Et ils ont vraiment une initiative que j'ai beaucoup appréciée. D'abord, ça c'est encourageant les amis qui ont initié la réunion. 
On a vu la présence des autorités quand même influentes. Et j'ai vu la présence de ministre des Affaires, du Développement International qui était là, Jimmy, et puis euh, aussi présence de certains membres du gouvernement. C'est vraiment intéressant de voir que le Royaume-Uni a donné sa position. Ils veulent qu'il y ait la stabilité au Congo. Ils veulent aussi qu'il y ait euh, le progrès de la démocratie. Et c'est sûr que la communauté a manifesté la volonté de voir qu'il faut qu'il y ait le changement et tenant compte du respect de la Constitution, ce qui a été un peu trop génial et j'ai apprécié l'avis de presque tout le monde qui était dans la salle. Sauf qu'il peut y avoir des divergences, c'est certain que euh, le, le Royaume-Uni prend encore des mesures qui ils veulent travailler avec l'Union Européenne. Et nous avons beaucoup attendu aussi qu'il y ait eu aussi une réunion de ministres de l'Union Européenne. On attend ce rapport-là. Je crois qu'à partir de ce rapport, on va voir. Mais sauf que nous sommes vraiment bien déterminés de voir que les Congolais veulent que Kabila parte le 19 décembre. Et c'est vraiment génial. Je crois que c'était vraiment important qu'on soit dans cette réunion. Vous êtes euh, euh, représentant ou fondateur du Congo Calling. Vous êtes l'un des activistes connus ici au Royaume-Uni. Vous avez assisté à cette conférence, vous voyez, vous avez vu l'engouement et euh, certaines réponses euh, des délégués officiels britanniques. Quel est votre avis là-dessus bon, Je crois que il est très important de, de se dire que le, la position du gouvernement britannique est assez euh, mitigée. Euh, D'une part, euh, ils soutiennent euh, le changement au Congo, mais d'autre part, ils les disent en des termes très, euh, très molles. Alors, au très mou, je devais dire. Mais seulement, notre action, notre démarche consiste à ce que nous puissions amener le gouvernement britannique à prendre des positions fermes par rapport au changement au Congo. Et, et c'est ça notre démarche. Et je crois qu'aujourd'hui, euh, les autorités britanniques ont eu l'opportunité d'entendre de vive voix la population congolaise en Grande-Bretagne qui s'est exprimée comme un seul homme que nous voudrions un changement au Congo et nous voudrions que la constitution du pays puisse être respectée. Donc je crois que tout cela était important pour que les autorités britanniques puissent entendre ça de la diaspora congolaise.